What's up, punks? It's Shinobi, and this is episode 7 of Shy 256 So uh, it's going to be a real short one today. I'm just here to announce that I have forked Shinobi coin, and it has a thriving multi-million dollar OTC market, pricing it currently at $100,000 a coin. So you guys just might want to get in touch with your, your accountants and your tax attorneys to sort that all out. Boom. All right, I, I want to talk about not not the IRS issue with with the tax policy clarification itself, but really what led to that um, the lobbying coin center, and I, I kind of want to start this off in the same way I did a tweet thread I made about this uh, the other day. You know, to don't listen to this and run off and start making personal attacks like all the all the criticism about i'm about to levy th th there might be some personal elements to it and i might get a little heated but it's it's not to shit on people just to do that it's it's a serious critique of the overall strategy going on in this space with regards to lobbying and so i, I want to look really at the two big things you know, that have resulted from Coin Center kind of going out there and going, hey, regulators, can we get some clarification on this stuff that isn't really clear? Um, and, and just kind of engaging with the, the, these regulators, the, the bureaucrats is, is where they're, they're, they're spending their, their attention and engagement is what I'm trying to get at. Um, the, the first time was, you know, that stands out in notes to the CFTC. Um, getting the, the judgment that Ethereum is not a security. And I, I don't care what, what, like, what you think about the government and what the government should or shouldn't be doing. It exists. There are laws. Um, just, unjust is irrelevant. But they're not being applied evenly at all. And it's due to a lot of the, the efforts by special interest groups engaging with these regulators and trying to air quote educate them about things and ethereum is undeniably under the letter of the law unjust or not a security it is from a technical point of view a complete fucking scam it is just a dead end unscalable technology full stop and a big part of the reason that the, the cftc decided that is coin center and lobbyists and one of the, the the most absurd examples i think cutting to the core of just how inept this educational outreach of this these regulators are is coin center's response a while back to the cftc's request for comments regarding ethereum and there's a whole number of issues i had overall with it but the one thing that stood out the most was an example in the beginning trying to argue um, why Ethereum is not, not a security, why it has a legitimate use as a, a cryptocurrency. And there was an example of a light bulb in a building and trying to make that light bulb go on or off or do something using cryptocurrencies. And it, it was put forth that a Bitcoin powered version of this would not be as auditable as an Ethereum powered version because it's just sending money to one or another address and hoping something happens. Whereas with Ethereum, you can see the smart contract on chain. And this is just so absurd. Like it, it's, it's, I, I, I'm at a loss for words partially that is complete horseshit because the thing the, the linchpin at the end of the, th the thing to really be able to audit whether this whole system will do what it's supposed to is the light bulb the thing in the real world that regardless of whether you're just sending money to a Bitcoin address or can see the smart contract on chain, you cannot audit remotely. You can't just look at it and see this will work. 
Whether you're sending money to a Bitcoin address or an Ethereum smart contract you can audit. It is the exact same level of complete blind trust that the light bulb in the real world is actually going to do what everybody told you it would do if you sent money to whatever blockchain. And it, it, it's insane to me that a lobbyist group that exists solely to educate our government accurately on these technologies is just so mind-bogglingly off the mark. And obviously, you know, the, the, the second big example is this recent IRS snafu. Um, is mostly them pushing for clarification from the IRS that led to this being released and the insane, uh, you know, clarification regarding tax liabilities for forks and airdrops. And the real cherry on top is after I went off on a, on a, a big tirade about all this on Twitter, um, I was responded to pointing um, at Bill AB um, 1489, I think, um, that was put forward in February in California. It, it's a, their crazy version of a bit license. And this was put forward to me by a coin center employee as a positive thing that they have accomplished. And it's like, holy shit. Um, okay, first I, I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat a bit of what I said on Twitter. Um, the rationalization was that it's okay because these are only custodial businesses being licensed. But most custodial businesses are exchanges. They're the things facilitating price discovery. And if you understand the strange loop of consensus in these systems, that is a linchpin. You pull that out, it, it falls apart at this point, at least until Bitcoin is just widely used as money everywhere until people are just buying things with it and being paid in it and that there are no exchanges that then you go take your your fiat to to get bitcoin but until we get to that point these exchanges are a linchpin in the consensus process because that's where price discovery happens and the entire forward progression of of consensus facilitated by the miners is motivated by market-based incentives. If you don't have a place to price that, if you don't have the liquidity for those miners to unload that, for, for all of that to be taken place under a, a competitive, purely market-driven dynamic, then the consensus process either completely falls apart or it becomes more controlled. Because the more centralized those pricing mechanisms are, those exchanges, those custodial businesses, it's okay to, to choke with regulation. The more centralized that linchpin in the consensus process of these networks are. And they just, like, you, do, do you guys at Coin Center not understand that? Do you not get the fundamental threat to any open, system in this in this wider ecosystem that 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 attitude about custodial exchanges presents D do you not get that on any level and also specifically this bill um what are some of the crazier things in there um oh yeah the, the only way to not need the license is if you only process under five thousand dollars a year so running a, a twitter tip thing is pretty much it um you can get a partial, you can apply for a license and operate without it um, if you are only going to process, not, not make, not profit, process under $35,000 a year. Um, but A, catch 22, um, there's a bonding aspect of this that requires $25,000 kept unencumbered at all times um, for the license application and license um, process. So um, you can just apply and do it, but you have to have $25,000 laying around and can't process any more than $35,000, uh, you know, or your license goes away. 
Um, oh yeah, there's um, a condition in, in the, the draft of the bill that I read, um, pretty much allowing the government to grab any transactional um, customer information at any time for any reason and refusing to give it to them is grounds to um, shut your business down and revoke your license. Um, so pretty much the transactional history of every single customer of a licensed business under this regime um, is completely open to the government at all times. And they plan to try to make this license scheme a cross-state um, template where if it fits close enough with California's, they will um, recognize licenses between states and share this personal information they have unfettered access to across state lines, not just across state lines. In the, again, in the version of the bill I read, they would share this information with international bodies outside of this country. And this bill is what was presented to me by a coin center employee as an example of their good work. That's fucking crazy. Like you're out of your fucking mind if you think that's an example of good work. And you know, before I start yelling at this point, because I can feel myself getting there, um, it's time to stop with these kinds of lobbying groups. It's it's time to stop engaging regulators, um, unless you have a specific reason to, such as the, the people trying to get these ETFs off the ground. Deal with lawmakers, preferably deal with lawmakers at your local level, at your state level where you can actually have some kind of more concrete impact. And more importantly, where you're actually dealing with the people who have legislative power to actually correct things instead of just um, the ability to interpret existing things and a tendency to do so in an incredibly detrimental and just crazy way. Because, you know, I think it's pretty fucking clear at this point what the that strategy of dealing with government engagement has gotten us. Deal with the legislators, deal with shit as locally as you can, but it's time to stop this stupid bumbling around at the federal level asking for permission and clarification from people who don't even have the power to change anything. Because it's not gonna do shit except recreate the same detrimental result over and over. So on that note, adios everybody.